Father, in the perfect name of Jesus, I thank you one more time. All these, your children, in this place for this hour. We want to thank you for the gift. We want to thank you for all these that came to give the praise and the honor to you first. But I need you, oh God, always to gently move me aside. We need to hear another word from the Lord and not from man. So if and when I open my mouth, speak through me. And whatever I say, I pray is from you. And we have ears to hear with a heart to receive. Blessing us as only you can do, I thank you. Keeping us as only you can do, I thank you. Bless this service. Give us the things we need to make it decent and in order before you, oh God. And we will give you all the honor, all the glory, all the praise. In the Bible of Luke, the fourth chapter, the 18th verse through the... Luke? Usually I do this, but I'm not going to do this today. I'm not going to say Matthew, Mark. Not even gonna tell y'all it's the third gospel. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna do it. <laughs> but if you have it, say amen. amen. In the 18th verse, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and recovering the sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised. Yeah. Verse 19 says to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And make a footnote just for John 14 and 12. Jesus says, Verily, verily, I say unto you that he that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do, because I go to my Father. Just for a few minutes. A preacher empowered by God. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. A preacher empowered by God. I got a little footnote here. Doc, we wanted to say we come here to celebrate, but that's already been said. All the accolades have already been laid out. But I want you to know that we are here first to praise God. But we want to praise God for the gift. Yeah. I know he is a man of God. I, I see great and new hope. Our moderator, our pastor, Mount Palmer, all the other churches that may be present I'm not aware of, Dr. Irvin, all here because of love. I, I love this association because it's built with love. Yeah. Pastor Irvin and I were talking earlier. I, I left an association because they had cliques. Uh -oh. uh, your group over here and your group over there and, and probably zero support for the moderator. And I was invited to come to this association and I never left. Because of the men that God has placed in my presence, uh, the friendship that flows from these churches. Uh, don't let a devil on earth separate us. We are getting stronger by the second. And it's not because we hate thee one another. It's because we love and respect one another. Had I not been preaching, I pray God I'd been sitting right along up in here somewhere. And, and I don't know why my moderator had me come preach. He ain't nothing wrong with him. <laughs> he started feeling good. That bad foot was going to, y'all couldn't see him. <laughs> this is what I come to do. You need to have a smile. Uh, you're up against the world. 
and every now and then surrounded by some friends that give us put a smile on your face, and, and that choir yells. Uh, uh. When I was walking in the in the parking lot, I, one brother made the sun disappear. He said, what size them shoes? I looked at him. I said, your size. <laughs> I'll preach barefoot if I got to. <laughs> no, I'm just joking with you, Pastor. <laughs> Ain't God <going> good? <laughs> well, you don't know. I was trying to figure out how to unstring these bad boys. <laughs> but it was all in love and in fun, and we had laughter from the parking lot to the pastor's office to the sanctuary to the pulpit. Nothing but joy. And that's the way it ought to be. Uh, well, I'm going to say this where the world don't know what they're missing. Because we, the real Christians, we know in times of trouble who we can go to. Uh, it used to be in times of trouble, I, I don't mind telling y'all about me. Because I know he bought me from a, I can sing the song, a mighty long way. And I wasn't an alcoholic, but I knew all about Crown Raw. I ain't even got to ask, can I get a witness on that one? We all come from a long ways. But praise God, look where we are now. <laughs> My biggest problem now is not Crown Raw, it's, it's, it's uh, uh, Dr. Pepper. Where you at, first lady? <laughs> she hides my Dr. Peppers from me. I got a wife just trying to help me stay alive, Pastor. I'm a disobedient brat when it comes to Dr. Pepper. I hide them all in the back pocket. I mean, she checking me like a little boy. Turn around. I ain't turning around. I'm a grown man. I saw a pastor look at Sister King's. Mm. See, I've already told these two sitting by each other, I know they can. Louisiana ain't got nothing to do with it. I know they can. I listened to that pastor talk. I said, my wife say that same thing. And then I found out where his wife was from. Okay. They, they've been educated in the Louisiana way, uh, obstructing their men. Mm -hmm. uh, ain't nothing wrong with it. Because y'all don't know me. If my wife don't look out for me, I have a, a tie that don't match nothing. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm colorblind. I, I reached out there and I put my foot out and I had a black sock with a blue suit. And I looked over there, that, that sock was blue, so I moved the black sock and put the blue suit out there. <laughs> so nobody knew I was colorblind. And then Sister Little would bust me on our way out and say, you wore the wrong socks again. That's why we've been empowered by God, Doc. We got patience. Patient wives. Because <laughs> I think, oh, I heard a testimony already. <laughs> Patient wives. My wife, no, boy, without her, I'm in trouble. That's when it comes to dressing and eating. Because she cooks good, I eat good. Perfect marriage. <laughs> y'all ain't hear that, see? Y'all didn't think I got to be 6'3", too many pounds just by looking at food. I got a sister that can burn. <laughs> she got a husband that can eat. <laughs> Look at the good Dr. Luke. Luke recorded Jesus. And Jesus was quoting when he's teaching Isaiah 61, 1 and 2. Now, while he was reading the words to the people in the synagogue, Jesus went there on them. See, Isaiah told you in 61 and 2 the, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. And Jesus broke it down and said, here he is. You don't have to proclaim it anymore. He says, this day is the scriptures fulfilled in your ears. So don't worry about uh, when it's going to happen. I'm telling you now, it's happening. I am God in the flesh. I am here because you studied Isaiah, and I'm going to let you know that everything my father told Isaiah to write, uh, here I am. I was and will be wounded for your I will be bruised for you. But it's only going to happen one time. Because when all that is over and I go sit on the right hand of my father, I will be back. 
See, so y'all already got that part. Serving a God who is willing, who's able to supply all of your needs, my friend. Not some of them. In times of trouble, I love your office. It's got a lock on the door. Sometimes you have to do the Lewis Little. Close thy door. Lock thy door. Take thy phone and put it on mute. But do like me. Take it and turn it off. Pastor King always tell you don't never turn it back on. But in that time, when I'm seeking the Lord while he may be found, I don't need clutter. I don't need somebody calling in my office telling me that the restroom's out of toilet tissue. There's some trash over there in the sanctuary by the organ system. I don't need to hear that. If you saw it, pick it up. <laughs> but we know that they mean well. But God means greater for you than any of us. That's why he gave you a key to the lock on your door in your office. And when you had enough, lock it. And put that, well, don't put the do not sign, do not disturb sign. It don't work for me. They knock on the sign at my church. I know you're in there. Do not disturb don't mean come in. It means stay out. I, I'm trying to preach to you, but I need to preach to some other folk. Who, uh, <laughs> somebody hmm, who just might be close to learning about how to get into the world, the need to serve the evilness of this world. Hmm, yeah, it's, they need to hear a word from a man of God who's not ashamed of the gospel. Now I'm talking to all of us. Psalms 37, 1. You know it like I know it. Jesus, the Bible is recording the writer David as saying, fret not thyself of the evil doers. Be not envious in their ways. I don't care if they roll in here with a six-wheel limousine. Uh, thank God they got six wheels on it. But I'm going to go out there and get my old truck, and I'm going to get my four wheels, and I'll drive right behind and praising God just like I hope he praising God. If the six wheels wasn't for me, it wasn't for me. But God gave me what I needed. And that person that's leaning toward the world was sent to you for a special reason. Was sent to you for a special reason. Was sent to y'all for a special reason. He didn't care about how much money you had. He already got some money. He needs to hear a word from the Lord. He needs to know where to put his money when he's making some money. Put it in the house. Uh, the church house, if you didn't know what house I was talking about. Hard times for pastors. I've learned in these 10 years. It won't always be bluebell. It won't always be cake. Some folks going to bring you flowers as cactus with them. Got some roses with some thorns still on them. But a God has a word for that. Matthew 5 and 11. God said, tell you this evening, blessed are you when men shall revile you, persecute you, say all manner of evil against you falsely, and they'll try and do it in God's name. Pastor, you know the Lord didn't want you to preach that sermon. Well, I thought God talked to you in your closet when you were closed up. But if he didn't want me to preach a sermon, I don't think he need to go to you to come to me. 